Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. I am going to make sure. There we go. Make. Nope. Nope. That's not what I'm going to do. I was going to try and make sure that I'm muted. Oh, boy. Okay. I think I'm good now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hello, everyone. Hello, Marilyn. Hi, Pamela, Claudette, Sandy, Hazel, Christy, Carolyn, Kelly. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy to see everybody here. Hopefully, you guys are not getting the same echo that I am getting. Hi, Charlene. I'm not getting an echo, but I know it can be distracting for you. Okay. Artix is telling me that there's no echo on her end. So I'm going to go ahead and um, close out. I might have some kind of other window open here. Oh, oh, I fixed it. Yay. No echo. Okay. So <laughs> let me dive back in. All right, guys. The Comments are flying by fast and furious. Thankfully, I've got Ardith here behind the scenes to help me out. She is going to pop up questions from you guys um, to make things maybe a little bit easier for her. You can always write question at the beginning, beginning of your comment. That helps her find it really fast. So, oh. How did I get started in card making? So that's a great question. Uh, my husband actually, a couple of years ago, bought me a Cricut for Mother's Day. And um, the one time I had ever made cards before that was I had made cards like 10 years previously. I had had a very small wedding and I made my own wedding invitations. So I got my Cricut and I went crazy with it. And then I wanted to figure out a way to make some paper flowers look more th three-dimensional um, or to have more depth. And I discovered Perfect Pearls and that was my gateway. I was done, you guys. Perfect Pearls and then all I do all day every day is card make. Um, it's, a, it's a lifestyle, guys. It's not a hobby for me. I live the lifestyle. So <laughs> that's how I got started. If you guys aren't familiar with me, uh, thanks, Regina. Uh, if you guys are familiar with me, I am on YouTube. That's where I do most of my stuff. My channel is Dream Craft Create. So you can check me out over there. But I do a lot of similar kind of tutorials to what I did for the summit. My favorite technique. Um, I'm going to have to say my favorite technique is probably ink blending. I do love a good ink blended background. Um, so that's probably my favorite, I would think. Good question. Okay, Kelly, when you emboss, do you ever do a cardstock that you've printed a picture on prior? And how does that work? New to this because of you. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you're new to it because of me. Welcome to the rest of your life. You're never going to want to stop card baking. So um, yes, you can emboss pretty much any kind of paper-ish material. So if it's vellum, if it's cardstock, if it's, uh, you could try photo paper, you're probably gonna get some creases is my best guess, but you could definitely try it. If you're gonna do it with a picture, I would make a couple of recommendations. You don't want to have whatever your picture is kind of clash with whatever the embossed image is. So if you're going to do a picture that has a lot going on, I would use an embossing folder that has a repetitive pattern. So like small dots all the way across it or something like that, that would work well. Um, if your picture is kind of like mostly blue and then it's got like a rose over here or something, um, I would try and use an embossing folder that maybe just has some portion of it with the embossed image and have that surround your printed picture. So you you guys don't be afraid of trying things. I, I'll just throw that out there. I know when I first started making cards, I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, that seems really intimidating. And then I realized, you know, 
why not just try it? Why not see if this thing does that? Let's let's see what happens when I use, you know, distress ink and I use pigment ink on a card. And spoiler alert, it doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> you know, you can use multiple inks on a card. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to just try stuff. Worst case scenario is you don't use that piece of paper, right? So Joyce, what kind of inks do you use? Oh, every kind of ink. <laughs> I love ink. In fact, I have a, uh, that's probably my weakness out of all the things I own. The most things I own are ink. Uh, if you go to my channel, I have a video. It's a very long video, so you might want to pop some popcorn before you watch it, but it's all about inks, and it explains the differences between dye inks and hybrid inks and pigment inks and um, specialty inks and solvent-based inks versus water-based inks of what they all do, and it, so I, I can show you guys. You can probably see I've got my distress oxides there got my Simon's stamp dye inks. Then I have um, all to new dye inks. Then I have Versafine Claire pigment inks. And then I have all of my black and white and specialty kind of inks like alcohol lift inks. And then down here, what you can't see is I have several drawers full of my ink cubes, which I have Concord and Ninth. I have Hero Arts. Um, I have some Lawn Fawn. I have, uh, yeah, it just, that's a long answer to your question. I still love my Cricut. Unfortunately, I don't get a chance to use it very often. And that's mostly because um, my day is really taken up by creating cards uh, and creating videos and content for um, card companies. So I do a lot of work with um, uh, Pick Up and Studios and Honeybee Stamps now and Scrapbook Pal and um, Not Too Shabby, Alt New, Spellbinder. So I just, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to use it, but I do tend to break it out during the holidays to make projects. Okay, Briard. Yes, there are lots of different weights of vellum. And in fact, for um, depending on your embossing folder, that can impact how well it's going to uh, emboss. So I have, I tend to keep a thin vellum and a thick vellum. My thin vellum is from Recollection or it's Recollections and it's just from Michael's. It's from the craft store, huge pack. It costs like $10 for like a million sheets. I don't know, a lot. Um, and then my high quality vellum that's very thick that I love to use is from Lawn Fawn and it is heat embossable because you can heat emboss on certain vellums as long as they're heat resistant. Debbie J, how do you like your paper pouncers? Uh, I have tons of videos with paper pouncers on my channel. I love them. I didn't do a lot of die cut videos until I started using paper pouncers. Um, so I like to, when I'm making a die cut card that's real heavy with die cuts, I will cut everything out of white cardstock and then I will color what I want with my inks. And it's super easy to do with the paper pouncers. So I use them a lot. Talia, is there a way to emboss without an embossing machine? Uh, I saw this question come up, I think, over on the community page. And someone had mentioned that they had success getting an image by putting something in an embossing folder and then stacking really heavy items on top. Um, it, but I, I can't imagine that's going to give you a the same kind of embossed image you're going to get from an embossing machine. Um, oh, Brandy's saying you can also try a rolling pin. Um, it, I will tell you that my, uh, I use a Platinum 6. It is, um, you know, a, it's a smaller machine. It's a less expensive machine. I use, the, um, yeah, it's back there. So I use it all the time. It's a manual die cutting machine, but it is so good for so many other things. So if you are new to card making, I definitely recommend having a die cutting machine. Um, I've got a, I've got a video that has like 15 basics that I think every card maker should have. It's just my opinion, but that's, that's definitely something I think you need. 
What is my favorite cardstock that won't crack when you score it? Uh, well, none of my cardstocks crack when I score them um, that I know of. I, I think if you're, I have a score buddy. It's a small one. Um, and this is what I use to score my cardstock. I think you're talking about for card bases. And it works really well. Super easy. There's other ones on the market. Uh, my favorite colored cardstock line is Concord and Ninth. That is pretty much the only colored cardstock that I keep um, because it's heavyweight and it, I love the colors. They're beautiful, but there's lots and lots of other companies that make beautiful cardstock. Oh, good. The rolling pin does work. Yay. Okay. So if you don't have a die cutting machine and you want to try embossing with an embossing folder, um, try it with a rolling pin, but don't step on it. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Good. Good advice. We won't be stepping on them. Okay, Kelly, what's your favorite tool that you use? Oh, mm, well, it, it wouldn't be the first thing that comes to mind probably when people say tools, but my glass mat is my, probably one of my favorite things that I've ever gotten for my um, craft group. I just love working on it and I love the magnets. It's from Glassboard Studios. Lisa, are you able to clean off the paper pouncers? Can you use one for dark and light colors, etc.? Okay, the only caveat with the paper pouncers is that because you cannot get them fully saturated, you don't want to use um, dye ink and uh, oxide or pigment ink on the same paper bouncer. So I have two sets, that's why you guys see two sets back there. I use one for my dye inks and the one for my oxides and my pigment inks. They are fairly easy to clean. They don't have to be cleaned super thorough because they really, just in case anybody's never seen these, this is what they look like, okay? They're like a super fancy, high quality makeup sponge. And so they don't actually retain a lot of ink. I have used this many, many, many times. And you can kind of see, it's not like it soaks the ink into it. It tends to keep the ink on the surface of that sponge. So when you clean it, all you need to do is get a paper towel. I take a, just a paper towel, fold it, and then I spritz it lightly, just one time with my water sprayer. I wipe the pouncer a couple times and then I tap it off on a dry paper towel. And I clean mine every time I'm done with them. And it takes me like, I don't know, a, less than a minute to clean them. And um, I have no issues at all. Kelly, oh, and Kelly, I have a whole video about paper pouncers over on my YouTube channel. You can go check that out and I'll tell you all about them. They're very cool. You guys are throwing those questions at me so fast. So what's everybody's favorite card? Have you guys tried the cards? I hope you do. They are um, super cool. I'll throw them up here again. If you haven't taken or haven't watched the class yet, this one I made with um, paper velvet over the top of an embossing folder. So pretty. And then this guy, if everyone's wondering why people are talking about vellum, this one was done with vellum. Very, very fun. Super easy to do. Yeah, everybody's loving the vellum. It's, it's such a cool thing. And you guys can also use acetate, okay? So just because I used vellum in the, the presentation, try it with acetate as well. It also looks really cool. And then this last one was with embossed strips. I saw, um, I can't remember who posted it, but somebody already posted a picture of ones that they did like this, and they look so good. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, metallic cardstock. Like my goal when I decided to put that together in my presentation was just to encourage people to try different things in their embossing folder. Metallic papers look amazing. 
Debbie, what other things can you do with the paste? Oh my gosh. I wish you could see this drawer. I'm going to hold it up. Maybe you can. This is one drawer, you guys, of paste. I have a second drawer full of paste. When I say that I am obsessed with paste, that's probably my second biggest kind of crafty um, item that I have. I love it. I use it a lot on my channel. I use it with stencils. I use it on backgrounds. Um, I use it to highlight images like I did kind of with the embossing folder. It's super versatile and there's so many different ones out there on the market and they are all absolutely gorgeous. Question, what kind of camera do you have behind you? The light blue one next to your inks. Camera. Hmm. I'm not sure. Are you talking about this? This is my brother's scan and cut. Um, so I have a Cricut and a brother's scan and cut. Uh, if you're talking about this card, which you might be, this is blue. This is a card I made um, with products from Honey Bee Stamps. This is their Water Lily die cut. Lisa, where do you get your paper velvet? velvet? Uh, there is, if you are on my presentation page, if you go to my um, supplies, it'll show you where you can get everything. And uh, most of the item, most of the paper glazes and velvets and things, those are Picket Fence Studios. Those are where I have them from. But I have some from other companies too. Did you make the three pictures with the white frames? So how did you make them? Yes, I did make those with my Cricut. Um, there is a free, at least it was when I, I got it, SVG file on Jennifer Maker's website. Camera near my plant. Is this it? Is this what you're talking about? This is four inch mint tape. I think that might be what you're talking about. It's the closest. That's the only blue thing I'm seeing here. I don't have any cameras back here. So maybe, maybe that's what you're talking about. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what you're seeing. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. If paste is your second craft obsession, what is your first? Oh, it's inks. You came in late. I inks for sure. I have so many inks. They just, and I want more. I love them all. And that's mostly because I don't use colored cardstock a lot. So I like having all of the options and I ink blend a lot. So I like having as many different colors possible. Boy, you guys are, you have lots of really good questions. Really good. Okay, so I, um, I don't know if you guys were at the last summit. If you were, I was on the, I had a presentation at the last summit. And um, I don't even know if you can get access to the last summit unless you went to it. But um, I decided to come back for this summit because it's so fun and I love seeing everything that everyone makes. So I want to take just a moment to encourage everyone to actually make things right? So watch the class, make the cards, and then post them over in the Facebook community. Like it gives people so much joy to see everyone's projects. And if you make a project that's based on a presenter's class, definitely, you know, tag them in that because it is so amazing to see what you guys make. I'm always so impressed with the ideas that you have and the inspiration you get and how you come up with other things. Joyce, how do you come up with color combinations? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, I have a video. <laughs> that's always my answer. I have a video. Um, I actually have a video over on my channel that is all about picking colors, the perfect blending colors. And I'll see if I have it close by. Yeah. And I go over how I have my own 
color chart that I've created with a formula for how to pick inks, ink colors to get perfect, amazing ink blends. So definitely check that out. That's going to, unfortunately, it's going to take me way too long to explain it here in the video, but I have come up with over time, a kind of a formula to do that. Barbara, what do you do with all your cards? A uh, couple of things. The main thing I do it, with most of my cards is I donate them to Smiles for Seniors, and they are based in Florida, I think, and they work with um, uh, nursing centers uh, um, all throughout the country, nursing homes and, and different kinds of places like that. And they send cards um, that can be distributed among the residents at those facilities. So I do that a lot. I wait until I have a big box of them and then I send them off. And otherwise I send out my cards to people. Uh, I try not to hang on to my cards just because one, I, I make so many, I don't know that I, where I would put them all. And two, they, it brings me joy knowing that other people are smiling or getting happiness from those cards. What do you do if your Nouveau Mousse has dried out? Unfortunately, most of the time when your products dry out, they are no longer good. So I will say that if you, there's a couple of ways you can kind of reduce or um, elongate the life of your mousses, glazes, gels, those kinds of things. The number one way I say is get some press and seal. If you don't have access to press and seal, because I know some people don't have access to it in their country, um, something similar like saran wrap or cling wrap will work as well, which is not as good. You just put it over the top of your um, bottle before you screw the lid on and that'll help it last longer. But there, unfortunately there's no magic way to, to get it from going dried out back to workable. Question, why not stick down the vellum on the front bottom of the vellum card? You can. There's no, uh, you can stick this vellum down however you want. I thought it was kind of cool to have it so that it was just a flap. What I thought would be kind of neat, and maybe somebody will do it. Um, I didn't do it for this class, but it was to stamp a pattern on the paper behind the vellum. So you could stamp like blue dots, like if you have a big background stamp with blue dots or something like that. I thought that would look really cool. Um, but you can, you can make it longer and you could uh, attach it on both sides underneath. The only thing you have to be careful with with vellum is that vellum um, tends to show adhesive. So that's why I did the double-sided tape behind the front panel. Uh, but it's, it just depends on if you're willing to have a little bit of adhesive showing, uh, or how you want to attach it to the card. So you could definitely do that if you wanted to. Do you do any video tutorials on your skin and cut? No, unfortunately I don't. Um, I have my skin and cut and I know it sounds silly, but the only reason I have it is so that if I have stamped images that I don't have the dyes for, I use it to cut out those images. So it's, um, it, it can do a lot more than that, but that's the reason I have it. I prefer dyes and uh, I actually bought it before I started working with a lot of different companies. So most of the time I'm able to thankfully um, get my hands on the dyes. Do you use liquid inks to make your cards? Uh, I have used, I think you're probably talking about reinkers. I have used reinkers to do faux watercolor techniques in the past. Um, so I do use those. Uh, I also, you also can do that by smushing out your ink onto a slick surface, like a glass mat or a craft mat and spraying some water. And you can use that as a faux watercolor as well. So yeah, I've used those. And I also love spray stains. I use a lot of spray stains. Um, later. Okay. The name of my YouTube channel is dream craft create. So if you go on YouTube and search that, I'll be the first thing that comes up. You'll see my smelling face there. Um, but that is my handle that I use across social media. So I'm also on Instagram 
search dream craft create uh, all one word on Instagram and it'll come up. You man mentioned acetate and cinnabone. Do you have an example of how it looks after it is embossed? Um, I don't have it anymore because I actually mailed it out last Christmas. I made one, uh, but it is on my channel. There is a video that is five fun ways to use embossing folders. So there are five more ways other than the three I showed at, in my presentation here. I have a video showing five other ways on my YouTube channel. And one of those is acetate, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> I wonder what it would look like if the sentiment was under the vellum. Um, try it. I mean, I think it, that could look cool too. Uh, especially if you used a colored cardstock um, against like a white background with acetate. I think that would look really cool. Hi, Tiffany. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Debbie. Glad to have you subbed. Go watch all the videos. <laughs> you can get lost on YouTube, right, guys? Like I, I'm guilty of that myself, um, spending lots of hours watching and not as many crafting. Maybe you could also emboss the cardstock behind the vellum. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Like try these things, you guys, and see what you think. Worst case scenario, you've spent a couple of minutes embossing a piece of paper that you don't end up using for that card and you can save it and use it for a different card. So definitely try. I'm gonna grab a drink of water. <laughs> Debbie, you're always on YouTube even when you're crafting. Yeah, I tend to watch videos in the background too. I will, um, the problem is, is most of the time I try and watch a video when I am already trying to create something for kind of work, you know, a, a card making job that I have and I get distracted and it ends up taking me twice as long. Kelly, what is subbed? So that just means if you go on a YouTube channel, there'll be a button that says subscribe. And if you click on that, then in your, there's a feed on YouTube where, that you will show who you're subscribed to. It'll show all their videos as they come out. So then you can go on your subscription tab and see all of them. Now I will tell you guys, if you subscribe, I 100% recommend going to the little bell. There's a little bell on channels and clicking on it and you'll have an option to get to turn on all notifications for whatever reason the YouTube people I don't you know who knows why they haven't set up this way but even if you have subscribed if you don't have all notifications turned on it will not always tell you when I have a new video out I tend to come out with a video about once a week sometimes twice and some weeks I end up having to skip Cheryl, you're so encouraging. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. That's very kind of you. You know, I am, crafting is just so much fun. It is such a way to, it's a creative outlet, right? And it is, I'm not a fine artist. I don't paint. I don't draw very much. I do sometimes draw. But even when I draw, it's usually I'm creating like an SVG file. So it's not hand drawing. And I love, love, love how these these art forms card making make art and creativity so accessible to everyone like and you don't have to have a million things either right if you have some ink and some cardstock and a stamp and a die or even a stamp and a pair of scissors if you don't have dies you can hand cut out your images and you can just create something fun that didn't exist before so definitely create even even if you I am guilty of this myself even if you make something and you're like oh I'm not happy with that that's not what I was hoping it would look like it didn't turn out great you just have to remember that those are teaching moments right instead of saying I'm not happy with it look at it and say why am I not happy with this what is it about it that's bothering me and that's going to help you in the future the next time you make a card to not do that but have fun enjoy it people you know when I get a handmade card in the mail from my crafty friends I'm not looking at it and going oh this is not you know 
as amazing as it should be. No, I get it. And I go, oh my gosh, that was so awesome. I'm so happy they sent me a card and it just makes my day and makes me super happy. All right, time to wrap up. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks for all the questions. Definitely, absolutely take me over in the Facebook group. I'm lurking around in there. And like I said, post your pictures um, and I will answer your questions as best I can for sure. But again, check me out online, Dreamcraft Create. So excited to have you guys all here for the summit. I hope you all have a wonderful time watching everyone's videos.